Um, okay, we are missing one person, but we're gonna just uh, get going now. Um, so, hi, uh, welcome to depicting viscerality, which isn't a word, I think, um, in sports and wrestling. And I'm Tepi Zeppo. I'm gonna moderate this panel and introduce you to, well, actually I'm gonna have them introduce themselves, um, this uh, wonderful group of people that I have sitting next to me. Um, so yeah, uh, would each person like to introduce yourself and your work? Sure, uh, my name is Ed Luce. Uh, I primarily work on a comic called Lovable Oaf, which I describe as a kind of romantic comedy about big, scary, hairy guys and the people who love them and cats. But it's really a platform for me to talk about all of my passions, pro wrestling being one of the main ones, uh, metal and uh, fashion. Um, but yeah, uh, I do a lot of uh, uh, variant covers and things like that too um, for companies like IDW, Oni, um, uh, and uh, Image and Skybound. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a little taste of me. Nice. Uh, hello, everyone. My name's Tanya dorf Um I primarily right now make comics about uh, AEW and indie wrestlers. Um, my most popular comic is The Plight of Orange Cassidy, but I also have a bunch of other ones with Chuck Taylor, Ultramantis Black, Hollow Wicked. Um, I make a lot of work surrounding, surrounding the world of wrestling, not necessarily about the act of wrestling itself, um, which ends up being me talking about uh, things like getting older in a sport and like having to come to terms with who you were and who you're becoming or destroying your body for people's enjoyment, um, all through the lens of surreal horror. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what I do now, but moving forward, I'm hoping to do uh, queer romance comics and uh, historical uh, cowboy, gay cowboy comics. <laughs> so uh, we're going to bridge all the gaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Rob Allman, and uh, I have a, do a comic called Old Timey Hockey Tales, which is about um, sort of the golden age of hockey and the characters and incidents that sort of populate that. Um, there's just the characters that made up the sport, you know, going back into the, you know, pre-1980 uh, are just unbelievable. And um, I like to, you know, explore some of those and tell some of these crazy tales. Um, I also do a uh, weekly comic strip um, called Cartoon Canon about the uh, history of Pittsburgh sports, hockey among them, but also baseball and football and Olympic sports and, gosh, team tennis and, uh, roller hockey, you name it. Um, if it happened in Pittsburgh, I cover it. Um, and uh, as Ed mentioned, uh, it's just a cool way to sort of merge the, a few things I'm passionate about. Um, I've always liked you know, sports, but I've also always liked comics, and this is a good way to put it all together into something that I can share with people. Awesome. Um, really quick question uh pittsburgh hockey is that the penguins yes it is okay cool right, i knew two go. teams right. to the flyers and the penguins and that's it okay that's all you need. great um okay so the first question i have uh for y'all is i'm curious about this before we get into like the art of drawing people fighting and actions and all that good stuff um what's everyone's background in in sports and wrestling uh what did you grow up watching and like what inspires you now um, as a child of the 80s, I grew up with the sort of heyday of uh, WW. It was F back then, now it's WWE, obviously, uh, where all of the smaller leagues kind of merged into this mega league. So um, I discovered a lot about my sexuality um, from those uh, early wrestling days. In particular, I was very taken by um, uh, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, uh, who was part of the Hart Foundation, a tag team partner with um, Bret Hart. Um, I, I just, I didn't understand as a, as a lad, like why I uh, was sort of attracted to that body type, but um, he's a bear, if you're not familiar with him. Um, and he also wore pink, black, and white uh, were his sort of signature colors, which if you're familiar with my comic are also the signature colors of Wubbable Oaf. So I, I kind of pulled that and, and it's woven into the fabric of, of my aesthetic um, from that direct time period. Uh, 
But yeah, I was just sort of fascinated by the body types, fascinated by the crude stereotypes that were presented, especially back in the day. Um, there were a lot of, of ethnicities that were exaggerated, um, problematically so. Uh, and just fascinated by the gimmicks and the, the novelty of it and, and the storylines. Um, I kind of waxed in and out of it in the 90s. Um, you know, I would check in a little bit. Steve Austin got my attention. Goldberg got my attention. Um, also, Gold Dust, uh, who uh, I know again is looked upon, uh, frowned upon uh, as a, a character, but I was fascinated that there was this sort of queer character whose main move tactic was to sort of distract the other wrestler with uh, his queerness, essentially, and that manifested in many forms when he was sort of confronted and and. Um, uh, confirmed he was not queer, I was out. I, I quit it um, for a really long time. But when I started to approach Wobble Boof, I decided that um, that character needed a flip side, um, a, a heel side to himself, if you will. Uh, so I created uh, Goat Blood, who was his, uh, I sort of retconned a past history. He was a heavy metal themed satanic. Um, pro wrestler in the 80s and 90s, uh, and that character has occasionally taken prominence uh, in, in books like this. A lot of what you're going to see of my work is, is from um, this Hell on Ice match. Um, Wank is the name of my wrestling league. That is um, <laughs> Rasslin. I was quick to use Rasslin, which I know some wrestling fans hate. Wrestling Association of Na National Champs, but wank, obviously, because that was sort of my stake in it. Um, but yeah, I went back to my wrestling roots and, and got re-engaged with indie wrestling uh, to sort of research that uh, storyline that has been ongoing uh, in my book. Um, yeah, uh, it, 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 as you were saying, it kind of synthesizes a lot of character design. I enjoyed doing that. Um, and then figuring out how to do a fight comic, essentially, which is, this, that's why this panel is so great. Like, you know, as someone who did romantic comedy comics for a long time, figuring out how to stage a fight, I pulled a lot of my 80s and 90s Marvel comics and DC comics um, experience to, to do that, along with watching a lot of uh, footage uh, on YouTube, too, so, yeah. Um, for me, I never watched wrestling as a child, so I have no nostalgia whatsoever for it. Um, so I was introduced uh, through WWE in 2016 when the Shield reunion happened. Um, and then I quickly transitioned to watching New Japan, um, very specifically the Okada versus Kenny uh, matches. Um, and I wrote them down <laughs> because they're very important. Uh, <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom 11, Dominion 2017, and then Dominion 2018, which is like... The, one, the, the two Dominions were the one hour draw and the two hour three, out of three falls match and they were both so good. And it made me realize like after watching WWE what wrestling could be um, in terms of storytelling, in match storytelling, they push themselves so hard to like get these, just get these incredible matches. And then from there it just kind of, I followed New Japan um, Kenny and the Bucks, and then they made AEW, and then I've been watching AEW, and then I transitioned into watching more indie stuff, which is very fun because you get right up and close and personal with the wrestlers and the mat, and like watch them from just right there, and that really impacted my art a lot because for me, one of the coolest things about drawing wrestling is the moments you get when you really like zoom in, which is not something you get with wrestling, because a lot of time it's a huge camera angle, um, and like how bodies are connecting, how people are helping each other in the ring, the way that they communicate in the ring, um, through slaps, like making noises, through talking under their breath, and, our help, and like the way that moves are done with two people, and I think that that side of wrestling is incredibly interesting, the performative aspect of it. Um, and that's a lot of what I try and focus on, um, is like the little moments, uh, within a big match. So I haven't ever like planned out a full wrestling match or anything in any of my art, but, um, that's, I think where a lot of my inspiration comes from. <laughs> um, I grew up <clears throat> just, you know, watching all sports. I was not particularly good at any of them. I like to play them, but I was not particularly that good at any of them. But I like to watch them. I like the drama. I like the just the the you know unscripted knowledge of not knowing what was going to happen. Um, I always found that really uh, exciting. And from just kind of a visual standpoint, I was always attracted to like logos, uniforms. Um, you know, I would you know do drawings of 
you know, this uniform or that uniform. I was a Pittsburgh fan, so, you know, when I was growing up, you had the pirates wearing these crazy bumblebee uniforms and um, everything was very bright and colorful. And so uh, that was just really attractive to me. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, with the comics, I, I kind of, uh, having, especially the hockey comics growing up in the United States, you don't have quite as much uh, connection to that when you're, when you're younger. Um, if I, you know, I'd grown up in Saskatchewan, I probably would have known this stuff, but um, I didn't find out about it till later. And so there was a lot of things that I would, you know, I'd read that this crazy thing happened or, you know, this guy, you know, had his eye knocked out, you know, at the end of the second period and came back and played the third or whatever. And, uh, you know, so a lot of the stories I, that I choose to illustrate are just ones that are kind of like, you know, can you believe that that happened? That's just bananas that, you know, that there was a time when that went on. So, um, you know, just trying to connect in that, in that way. There's a lot of uh, just unbelievable stuff going back in history. Plus, a lot of the guys are super ugly, and really <laughs> ugly guys are a lot of fun to draw, and, you know, Amen. blood and <laughs> scrapes on the face and all that kind of thing, too. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I kind of, you know, I've done some, you know, not, not really romance comics, but kind of in that vein, and, you know, kind of got, gained a, 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 a reputation for be, being able to draw pretty girls and all that sort of thing, and that's great, um, and I love that, but it's, there's something... To, about just drawing just a hideous, you know, beast of a man that's a lot of fun. So that's, that's part of it as well. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so I have some questions that are going to be like a little directed to individuals, but it's opened up to everyone. Um, so, Ed, starting with you, uh, in your Wank Hell on Ice comic, um, <laughs> I love the title. I just, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was really excited to say it. Um, it depicts a wrestling match from the entrance uh, to the count out. And um, how did you like plan out and choreograph a full imaginary fight on paper? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, being somewhat familiar, but not maybe an expert on the history of wrestling, um, especially the sort of, um, and this is going to reveal my my relative inexperience with wrestling. Was it the extreme era? Um, I uh, I knew that I had to come up with something that in the comics form I could only do in the comics form to sort of top the reality of what an average, especially a more gimmick driven um, wrestling match would be. So. Um, I had a stable of characters that I had created. I really enjoy that part of making comics, the character design. Um, the Oaf character, Goatblood, had been around for a while, but um, I put him against uh, a sort of, because it's the 90s, an extreme snowboarder character called Dr. Avalanche. Those of you that are fans of Sisters of Mercy will know that the drum machine's name is Dr. Avalanche. So I'm always kind of weaving little references to music and what I do too. Um, so to get to that, unconventional, crazy, drawable, comic-worthy match. Um, the ice-themed uh, wrestler is gonna fight the hell-themed wrestler on a sheet of ice. So the wrestling match is covered in a thin sheet of ice that's meant to be slammed on and broken down and, and really following that attitude era. That's the uh, era that I'm, I'm thinking of where there was all these extreme death matches in WWE and um, WCW. Um, so yes, uh, in, in, in possibility and in true comic book fashion, Dr. Avalanche comes down on a sort of shoot and, and snowboards onto the uh, wrestling uh, slash ice rink um, and hits Goat Blood with his uh, snowboard and immediately breaks it in half. So the match is on, he has a disadvantage, uh, Goat Blood, in that he doesn't have sort of essentially um, spikes on his boots the way that Dr. Avalanche does. And you know, it's meant to really embrace their gimmicks and they get into um, a brawl. And I am very driven, as you can see by the picture up there, in capturing moments for my audience of the male body that will be enjoyed, shall we say, um, fetishistically so. Um, gut punches are kind of a fetish thing um, in a lot of gay porn. So I, I'm constantly finding ways to put um, erotic things into um, everyday situations and this wrestling match seemed to be like the perfect opportunity to, to do that. So I wanted there to be a, a rhythm to the match. The, the heel um, in this case is, is meant to be goat blood and, and Dr. Avalanche is meant to be the face. There's waxing and waning, but at a certain point, 
the, it's revealed in the dialogue that the match is real and that Dr. Avalanche is really going for goat blood because he, he, he thinks that he's a threat. So um, there's a lot of risks that are taken in the, um, some of the moves in, in some of the, um, the works. Um, and yeah, um, it's, it, there's more contact in it uh, than maybe um, you'd see in a, a normal match because they're, they're actually physically grappling. Um, and goat blood was always going to win. This is a story that is about his ascent to... Um, basically uh, becoming one of the premier wrestlers of the league. The, the uh, Behind the scenes, the organizer of the match is saying, okay, he's he's gonna get a push. You know, I'm using all of the language that you'd find in wrestling. Like, he's making moments here. He's, you know, he's, um, he's really selling this and getting the audience hyped. And that's how it happens in real wrestling. Those people that deliver and have the wind at their backs get the push and, and ascend the ladder. So, um, yeah, I just, a lot of the images that are probably popping up here are very fetishistic and very body driven. And um, I exaggerate certain angles to, to show the body and to showcase the two men kind of grappling. So it's meant to be sexy. You know, I, that's my investment in wrestling is I find it attractive. I think Barbara Kruger has this wonderful, um, quote uh, that goes along with one of her um, art pieces that says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get this right. You construct intricate rituals to touch the skin of other men. And that is absolutely wrestling. So I always go into that um, when I put, I put this story together, um, especially. That Barbara Kruger thing 100% inspires yeah. all of my wrestling art as well. Yes, <laughs> I love it. It's... Cool. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. So Rob and Tanya, this is a question for the both of you. Um, so you both draw a lot of uh, either single panel comics or illustrations depicting actions that would be easiest conveyed in a sequence. Um, what are your challenges and process around drawing fluid action in one image? Sure. Um, well, yeah, it's def it is definitely a challenge because a lot of the time, you know, if you have some, you know, extended action that kind of happens, how do you, you know, I, at least with me, I'm, I'm limited to one panel or one image or, you know, so you have to sort of find a way to to do that. Um, a lot of times I kind of, you know, try to focus on like what, what is like the, the, fo the focal point of it, what is sort of the apex of the action, um, you know, whether it's, you know, somebody, you know, got hit in the head with a ball or somebody, you know, you know, scored a goal and, you know, off their butt or something like that. Um, you know, that's like the focal point. Because you can, you can I, t I tell as well as show. Um, it's kind of a necessity with that, uh, you know, working within that paradigm. Um, but other times you can just kind of, if, if you, um, I mean, one of the nice things about being limited, at least for these strips that I'm describing now, they are things that actually happen. So there is a little bit of a journalistic sort of responsibility to at least sort of tell, you know, what happened. And in this case, on the screen now, like Doc Ellis took some acid, <laughs> Through no hitter, and um, you know there are tons of insane details about that day. But I feel like <laughs> to really sum it up, it's just you know Doc, high as a Georgia pine, um, throwing the ball. It really kind of you know tells you all you need to know about it, uh, you know, to get the idea across and get kind of just the shock of having, you know, it having happened. Uh, you know, it's another one of those stories where you just can't believe that that happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, go, it goes back and forth, um, you know, and it's, it's always a, you know, depending on the event, which, which way is the better way to handle it. And I know for me, doing comics, um, but also doing singular illustrations, I think that the human mind is a very interesting ability to add in the, be like, like, a couple seconds before and the couple seconds after a peak, like an image and I think like specifically for this one it's like you can even if it's just a singular image you can imagine what's happening before or after or what will continue to happen which I think is super cool um, and then in comics that's kind of the similar thing is that you have to your brain fills in the blanks between panels um, and I think that that is if you highlight like what um, you were saying like if you highlight the main highlight of the move, whatever the, I guess, the, like the climax of the move, the throw, the hit, um, then 
the mind of the person looking at it will fill in the rest, which I think is very interesting. Um, and so I just try and focus on what I think is like the most interesting point of contact. Um, I know I have like I have other images of you know people helping each other up. So what's the most important thing? It's like where the hand is touching on the body, or the way that the person is helping lift that person, or in a grapple or a hold. It's like the push of someone's fingers into like against the person's skin or things like that. And I think that um, that really helps to get across the visceral nature <laughs> of the uh, <laughs> of the move and of the sport. If I could just say that's a really good point. I mean, because you can do something just, you know, just illustrate some little detail, mm -hmm. like with a hand or, a, you know, a, an eyebrow or something like that, that conveys a little extra bit of, you know, emotion or, you know, getting something across a little extra bit of gesture. Um, it's a good way to handle that sort mm -hmm. of thing, that limitation of only having one image. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thinking more about kind of uh, conveying motion in a single panel, um, when you are drawing a, a, f a fight scene or uh, an action scene, do you use reference? Do you have like a movement background that maybe you reference? Have you done sports before? Uh, what is your process for um, putting together any, I guess, like a sequence of actions or like a single panel with an action? Well, um, for me, I, I, a lot of times, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm working on something, again, that actually happened, you know, sometimes you can find, uh, find a film of it. You can find, um, you know, video if, if it exists. And that can be cool because it can give you a little bit of that for similitude to, you know, have it, you know, show it as it actually happened. Um, but I kind of prefer ones like uh, where you don't, where there is no video and nobody can really prove it, so you can just kind of go wild and do whatever you want, and uh, you can just sort of make it up. And of course, this would, you know, this is a problem that I have that you wouldn't necessarily have have if you were, you know, creating stories out of whole cloth. But um, but it is, you know, fun to just sort of, you know, once you have carte blanche to do whatever you want to do, then you, you know, you're standing in front of a mirror or you're you know, looking at other, you know, old photos or something like that, digging through. I have a big photo archive of, um, you know, old hockey uh, photographs from the 60s and 70s that are always good to kind of get, you know, inspiration about, you know, folds on clothing and, you know, and faces and that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, I have, uh, <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny, but I actually have this little, these little maquette, little action figure guys that are super posable. And you can, I mean, you can get all kinds of punches and open hands and all that sort of thing. So when you want to really get that, you know, that, uh, you know, and you can be, you can get as wild with the, the gesture and the, you know, cartooniness as you want to. But if you're, you know, trying to do something that's a little more, um, you know, looks a little more realistic, like that page there, you know, you can get the, get the whole, uh, you know, get, just pose them up and, and go to town and put your own stamp on it. It's, that's usually my, t my tactic. For me, I'm very lucky to have many wrestling matches that I love out there. And so I basically just, if there's a match that I like, I will take a million screenshots of it <laughs> and I will just choose the best one and I will draw from that. And it has helped me learn how to draw the human body much, you know, at the speed of light. <laughs> um, and I haven't gotten to the point where I'm able to draw wrestling moves um, without looking at reference, because there is some crazy stuff the human body is doing <laughs> during those matches. Um, but usually, when I draw any sort of moves or any, um, just pretty much anything I, that includes actual wrestling moves, it is from a match that I really, really like as just a reference, because I love, I love the match so much. So, but my screenshot folder is absolutely <laughs> massive. It is too big. I cannot find anything in it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I definitely use a combination of both of what you've 
uh, talked about, um, especially video. There's such a plethora of wrestling across the board, any body types, any kind of match type you could possibly want. Um, I, uh, since undergrad as an illustration major, my professor uh, in, imbued in me a great love of, of research. So it's a great pleasure to go through all of these videos, as, as you're both saying, or pictures, um, looking at the history of things. I also have some oversized um, action figures that are super poseable. In particular, Storm Collectibles has made this Zangief figure from Street Fighter that is basically the physique of my characters. So um, a lot of photos, you know, holding that up, taking a picture of it and then um, using it from there. Um, yeah, I also occasionally, I don't like to do this, but um, I have to use some 3D modeling programs because I don't have access to an arena. And I wanted to show that cavernous quality to matches, especially larger um, promotional matches. Um, I also have a fear of blank space in my comics, so I drew a lot of crowd scenes uh, that I would often just riff um, likenesses of friends into. So I try and think about what's happening in the, the um, ring itself, but also create a really immersive image, um, no matter what the shot is, the, the, the shot type in the panel. Um, I pull all of that. I definitely went looking for WWE crowd shots and sign shots and really tried to get into the infamous uh, I'm going to, it's end of day and I can't say infinitesimal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> even if I got that right, um, details that you'd find in wrestling, you know, right down to those signs that people make um, and, and hang up. So yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure to, to pull from real life to draw these things. Um, I, I've been thinking a lot about like the broadcast team in sports, like especially in wrestling, um, but in any sports, if you are a person who is first getting into a sport and you have no idea what's going on, it just seems like a, a bunch of random actions and, and people fighting and the broadcast team really brings a narrative into the seemingly random stuff that's happening on your screen. Um, how, how do you kind of guide those scenes in comics? Um, so what kind of, uh, I guess, like how do you use narrative in your comics to push the, um, the action? Mm. I studied up, and I'm sure you must do this too, and, and definitely in hockey, there is a specific language that commentators use. So I created commentator characters and tried to emulate the patter of a lot of those uh, throughout history, the jargon, how they talk about the moves that they're making and give you inside information and history based on the character. So I would say I really focused on that. That was a challenge to write, because the, the in-ring stuff is a bunch of grunting, grunting and threats, and um, there's, I think, an art, and it's something that I haven't seen a lot of, maybe I need to read more wrestling comics, to, to the narration and to the commentating. I tried to create two characters that were very contrasting because that's what you see a lot in wrestling. You've got like a straight man and a sort of comedy person um, that are, are talking about stuff. So yeah, stylistically that's very different um, from uh, other types of writing and I, I really focused on that broadcast um, aspect. Yeah, I don't really, um, you know, I, I th there's no, uh, you know, announcer in my comics per se, but the way that I sort of, uh, you, you pick up a lot of that, like that jargon, like you said, you know, just in my narration, you know, because there's only so many ways you can say, well, you know, you know, scored a goal or, you know, uh, you know, hit a home run or won a game or you, you want to use all those different ways that you can say that say that without saying exactly that, you know, there's win, there's victory, there's prevailed, there's, you know, um, there's scored a goal, there's, you know, put the biscuit in the basket, whatever. <laughs> um, you can, uh, there's, there's lots of kind of different ways that you can say it. Because if, you know, it, it can get, sometimes the narration can get repetitive. And the more that you can, you know, just work that language a little bit, just, you know, work some alliteration in there, work some, you know, just some different ways of saying things. And also just, you know, with like hockey, you know, and, and wrestling too, I'm sure uh, there are just like, you know, cool ways to say things that you, the reader is going to appreciate, um, even if it's not apparent exactly to, you know, what you're reading when you first read it and you have to kind of read it again and, you know, you use the context clues to kind of, you know, put it all together and you can appreciate the language that way. I know for me, I haven't, um, a lot of my, a lot of my comics that I've done, um, are a lot of like internal, um, the person themselves thinking about what's going on. Um, but something I am very interested in trying to work 
with is uh, there's this wrestling promotion that is no longer uh, with us, but it was called Chikara. Oh. And um, <laughs> it's very good, but something that they always did was they put wrestlers on the commentation booth. So uh, they would have they would be in character commentating the match that was going on and either they would like the person who was wrestling or they wouldn't like the person who was wrestling. And that would even build the story more outside of the ring as the, as the in-ring storytelling is happening as well. And I feel like that added even more and more layers. They were very, very good at like all the, all the characters that they had really u- utilizing all of them and um, I say characters, I mean wrestlers, but they also are characters, um, <laughs> utilizing all of them to tell multiple stories at a time, all of these different factions, the way that they would all intermesh, um, and that is definitely something I'm very interested in trying in a comic at some point, um, but that would also require me to make a huge cast of characters, and that is a very large undertaking, What a cool idea. <laughs> You were telling me earlier that you had drawn, I think it was like 100 pages of a queer wrestling comic that mm-hmm. you don't have finished because mm-hmm. uh, you're nervous about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you should tell people about it, number one, because I think it's very cool. But also, um, uh, how much like I, how much actual like wrestling did you end up drawing in there? Because I know you really focus on the emotional stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did definitely have, I had planned about four, like, important wrestling matches. So things that would move the story forward through the match, um, either having to do with um, the two main characters who are in love fighting, and then they're like, God, I hate you so much, but I love you, and I'm I'm gonna suplex you at the same time, and like, um, kind of telling that story. (laughs) Um, but I think that that's the thing that's really interesting about wrestling is that it's a performance art. So you can utilize the fact it's not just a fight, it's um, telling you a story in ring. So if, um, in that comic specifically, wrestling is real. Um, so they do have to fight each other, but then if one of them has to lose, then it's like, I, but I don't, but I'm angry at you, so I don't want to lose to you because that means that you're better than me and you're not better than me. (laughs) Um, So, what was the question? I'm sorry, I got (laughs) lost. Wait, I forgot what it was too. (laughs) Um, But I just think that that comic is fun. I should probably revisit it. I remember what it was. Were you like, I was asking specifically about the the fights that you did have planned for it. Like, were you drawing it? Were you doing a lot of like, Choreography? Were you basing it on um, matches that you really loved? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was definitely. I was taking move sets from wrestlers that I really liked. Um, one of the characters was 100% a ripoff of Orange Cassidy because I love him, and instead of giving him a punch, I gave him a knee um, because it's just as lazy, uh, <laughs> but it's not a punch. <laughs> so, um, but with in terms of match choreography, I definitely was cutting things down because if I was, I was already even just planning a match, you think about how long they are to tell a good story in ring, um, it would be impossible to do all the moves written. I mean, you, you did it in your comic, but like, <laughs> it, it, but I, I think for, for me personally, I feel like it, it's not the, the wrestling isn't the point. Um, the wrestling is the vehicle uh, for the emotional story. Um, and so I don't have to show every lariat, every rope bounce, every suplex or jump off the turnbuckle or anything. It's just more so like what I was talking about earlier with like when the bodies are connecting, um, how the touch impacts um, if like it's, well, this comic was different because they're not helping each other, they're actually fighting. But Mm -hmm. yeah, how touch impacts um, the feelings of the characters, how their emotions are impacting if they're concentrated or not concentrated, that sort of thing. Um, and I think that that if you have a couple matches that are surrounded by all your romancy emotional stuff, then they're really impactful and they're like beats of the story that really get you, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm also really curious about like how you use... Um, panel layouts to uh, 
especially like in fights to like really break actions out or um, contain things or like create repetitiveness um, when you're when you're doing again like a choreo uh, choreographed action. Um, yeah. I think mm. that great page that was showing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm forgetting I have this thing. Ugh. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, te my panel layouts tend to be kind of on the more traditional side. I mean, uh, I was just thinking about that page that they had up of yours, mm -hmm. just all the big action, you know, and the, the big, you know, center panel and all that sort of thing, um, or the big action panel. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I, a lot of my stuff... Um, just the the kind of stories I tell it it the the um, it, rather than a moment to moment storytelling, it's more of a you know um, event to event storytelling. Mm -hmm. I guess where there's a lot of that stuff happening in between the panels that um, you know moves the story forward. But something like this is really fun because you just you know you have you, you have just this short little moment. This um, you know you're not telling the whole breadth of somebody's career. Or, <clears throat> you know explaining how. You know, I have a, a story that I did about Larry Kwong, who was a Chinese-Canadian um, hockey player, and he wasn't allowed to play in the NHL. And, you know, and I just sort of go through and, you know, um, cover his whole, his whole life, you know, learning about hockey and be, becoming good at it and the trials that he went through. <clears throat> he played, you know, in part of one game for the Rangers, and that was it, and he never made it back. But he still had a very, very, you know, successful career in other leagues, and Seemed by all me by all accounts to have a you know a, a good life despite the challenges that he that he faced, um, but uh, you know and so something like that is great. But the the moments like the the, the page previous with the fight, <laughs> the Rangers and, uh, and and Habs there, that's really good stuff. And it's it's fun to just kind of bust into you know just fists hitting faces and the aftermath. You know the the how it how it starts what happens and then the aftermath of that. Yeah, I use a lot of uh, overlapping inset moment to moment panels. I think the gut punching scene really shows that. Um, uh, coupled with splashes, yeah, um, a lot of uh, the language of superhero comics, so sound effects, bursts, I was really trying to sort of show the impacts and the weight and the heaviness and the, the damage. Like, yeah, a lot of um, that sort of bang uh, explosion gesture when bodies uh, are making contact. Um, so yeah, a lot of moment to moment stuff, which is not what I really do in, in my more romantic comedy autobio or, or memoir based, exaggerated memoir based work. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really, as I said earlier, pulled from my Marvel and, and DC, my love of those 80 comics, 80s comics, Mark Silvestri, Jim Lee, Eric Larson was a huge inspiration on this, especially since he loves to draw body hair too in his characters. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I just wanted big moments and then I wanted to make sure of what's up there right now, the little moments. Moments. Like, you know, my, my referee is in snow gear because he's sloshing around in ice and he had to have a mitten. And, you know, I wanted, as I said, to be really detail oriented, but also um, talking about the reference to from one of the previous questions that, you know, getting that leg up, making sure that it was a legal pin, all of that stuff was, was really important to me too. So, yeah, just using a lot of um, uh, moment to moment uh, and then paired with bigger moments that were kind of more pin up oriented, I would say. I mean, for me, I just kind of try and do uh, different sorts of, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm still ex learning and experimenting with comics. I definitely don't have as much of a history as uh, both of them do, but um, I like to just, I do traditional stuff, but um, like traditional panel layouts, um, but I always try and I think for wrestling matches specifically, um, uh, very uh, doing, like I do a lot of, um, I do a lot of square panels normally, and then when I'm doing action-oriented scenes, this is like the oldest trick in the book, but you do like diagonal lines instead, and it adds dynamicism to your page <laughs> and stuff, and like that sort of thing. And I know um, there was one page that was up with Orange putting his hands in his pockets, um, and do it like using the panels to uh, show the movement in that way, and um, show the crowd noise and the change without, um, impacting the st his stillness as a wrestler um, in that moment and stuff like that. So 
Um, I'm still experimenting, but I love cool panel layouts and, and going outside the box in terms of that sort of thing. So I definitely want to explore that more. <laughs> that one is really effective. Thank it's you. very clever. Thanks. Like a lot. Yeah, I love this page. <laughs> it's, it's very true to him. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Okay. So I think I'm going to open up to Q&A. Does anyone from the audience have any questions? And if you do, um, you can walk up to those mics on either side and just line up. Uh, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, Hi. A little loud, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who would you say were the players or wrestlers that kind of got you into the mind frame of this would make a great comic? You know, if it's somebody from your past or if it's somebody more recent, when did it, when did the connection kind of come? Was it specific people or was it more of a, um, more of a holistic kind of realization? I know, well, I know for me, it's definitely Orange because he was the first one I ever made a comic of. Um, and for him, it was more so, I got this idea in my mind, which was the comic um, that this is from is The Plight of Orange Cassidy. And the idea I had was the image of him sticking his hands in his pockets, looking down, and the image of his hands being there, but then his pockets have teeth. Um, so he's being controlled by his pants, AKA his gimmick. Um, so, and like the controlling nature of the crowd and the gimmick and being stuck in doing that for people's entertainment. Um, and he, I think the juxtaposition of his lackadaisical nature and the fun aspect of the best friends, which is the group he's a part of, versus the horror aspect of that idea <laughs> um, made it extra interesting to me, which is why I usually make comics about him or Chuck Taylor, who's also in The Best Friends. Um, and I think that that really cemented home that idea. And then going forward, um, that's pretty much, yeah, I like the contrast. Yeah, my, my Chuck Taylor comic too. Chuck. That one, he's fighting his past self because he's getting old um, <laughs> in a sport and he doesn't know how to deal with uh, what he used to be versus who he is now. So I think that that's really, really cool because wrestling can be horrifying too. <laughs> I guess uh, I had said earlier I, I was sort of um, gravitating towards, I mean, wrestler zero is Jim Neinhart to me, <laughs> um, but I do gravitate more towards the brute wrestlers. I like squash uh, matches. Um, and definitely more outlandish kind of personalities. I never kind of graduate. Uh, it's interesting. We're, we're sort of um, flip sides of the same coin because Orange is like a real a face and is yes. all about that stylization. And and he's he's beautiful. And I like the like the hockey players, like the ugly guys that are you 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 want to boo at who um, can do these feats of strength, but not a lot of of what I call artistic wrestling. Um, they just deliver the beat down. So, yeah, I think uh, you know I would love to portray a match that's a little bit more stylized uh, versus one that's like super violent um, at some point too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any hockey players who inspire you? Uh, well, not, not 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 as such. I mean, a, a lot of it's just you know, read um, you know reading old stories and things like that, and just kind of you know picking up on you know, somebody's story that I, that, that seemed interesting or, uh, you know, just caught my, caught my eye. So, you know, no one, no one specific. Okay. Yeah. Just, uh, hockey and wrestling, both very violent sports and I'm familiar with Ed's work. Uh, and I'm not as familiar with Rob's. I've seen some of your panels, but Tanya, you, your style tends to be more realistic. The question for all of you though, is where do you draw the line? with viscerality, be, you know, becoming, I know you're into the, the more gory aspect of it, but where do you draw that line and say, hey, this is just too much. I can't, I don't want to do that. We're not trying to make a, you know, something too uh, grotesque. So, I mean, you have to draw that line. Do you, do you all have, if you have specific, uh, specific instances in your head that you've, that you've been like, yeah, I can't do that. Well, I've got, um, there's a, uh, you know, like like most most of my stories are true, or you know, are mostly true. 
probably a you know good bit of exaggeration involved in some cases, but you know for the most part, you know I've, I'm I'm kind of drawn a little bit to some of these like sort of tragic stories. Uh, one of the first hockey comics I did was this story of uh, this guy named Bill Barilko who played for the uh, Maple Leafs back in the 50s, and um, he he uh, learned about it from a tragically hip song. It's just a kind of a reference to it in there, and I was like, you know, I heard this line and. It's like, what's this about? And I, I and I looked it up. Um, the guy scored the game, the series-winning goal uh, to win the Stanley Cup for the Maple Leafs, and then that summary went on a fishing trip and in a plane, and the plane disappeared, and he and he just vanished without a trace. And uh, they didn't find him for you know a number of years. I think eight or eight or nine years or something like that. And they finally found his plane, and that year the. Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup again. Hmm. Um, just such a weird, you know, little coincidence. So, you know, it's tragic, and I'm sort of, you know, some of those stories that are, you know, just have that sort of, you know, tragedy to them, you're kind of, you want to tell those tales just because I think humans are kind of drawn to that to some extent. But at the same time now, there's another uh, story about a guy named Clint Malarchik who played... Buffalo Sabres goalie. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, his throat got cut by a skate, uh, an errant skate uh, caught him, and uh, he survived. Um, but you know, it was just a horrible scene, and uh, you know, not the kind of thing <laughs> that I would just have any interest in really portraying. Because a lot, you know, it's one of those things that is so horrible. Everybody kind of, well, not everybody, but you know, a lot of people kind of know it, and it, I kind of feel like it's just so, so much that um, I don't need to tell it. Um, very, very weird, arbitrary line, but that's kind of where I come down on something like that, and that's the first thing that sprung to mind with your question. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I, uh, with wrestling, I hate death, mas death match wrestling. Um, I don't like blood. It makes me nauseous and faint. Um, so it's when, when, so I, I prefer my pro wrestling to be <laughs> very fake. <laughs> um, I don't like people, I feel like I'm definitely in the minority. I do not like when people blade and bleed in matches. Um, John Moxley. <laughs> um, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> um, but uh, I know that blood in wrestling, when People like it because they know it's fake. They know that the wrestler has bladed, and also, if, if anyone here does not know what that is, they carry a razor blade either in their wrist tape or somewhere else, and they do a cut usually on their forehead because head wounds bleed more to get the image of being hit and cut open without having it be a, a real, um, like hard, it's called getting a hard way um, when you get actually split open. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely have drawn blood um, in a romanticized way, I'd say. Um, like the uh, Hangman and Danielson piece, I know it's on the slideshow, um, they're both bleeding. Uh, I've drawn, a, I've drawn um, Moxley punching Yuta during their match um, more recently, and there's like a blood spray, and it's like not, I don't know, I just try not to do it as much, um, because I know also, and then in terms of wrestling, like they, it has a very sad past of people um, passing away in the ring due to accidents or people getting seriously injured. Um, and I do not like that. Uh, it turns my stomach and I want, I want to see people like pulling their punches or smacking their leg to simulate hits. Um, and I do not like when people get injured. So uh, I, yeah, so I guess I, I like to, I like it, I like it to not, I like to, I like the behind the scenes <laughs> of like making it look as real as possible while it's still fake. Um, I think that that's very cool and I think it's very hard to do and make it look good. So I think that that's really interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big fan of red means green either. Um, and I think I purposefully came up with a really cartoonish scenario so that I could avoid that. But yeah, certainly wouldn't want to depict somebody dying, you know, in a match or compound fractures. I think the most hardcore in this comic I get is someone throws up at the end. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so yeah, um, uh, although I did do uh, t-shirt design for Mike Paro, the deathmatch daddy bear, who does do all of those horrific matches. Um, that one with Effie is really hard. Well, I think the first one he did with Effie is really hard to watch. And I am a horror fan, and I do draw like blood in my comics, but it's like a lot of times fake blood. Um, yeah, um, so I had no idea. He had yet to do his really gory matches when he asked me to do this. Um, but yeah, I would stop short of that's not really a part of my my wrestling universe either. So Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh -huh. So go for it. Hey y'all. I was curious if there's a sport that you find personally interesting or visually interesting that you'd like to make comics of in the future that maybe you haven't dipped your toes into yet and why it appeals to you? That's a good question. <laughs> um Yeah, boy, you know, I uh I, it, just in, in my work doing the, the the sports history strip, I've I've covered so many, you know, um, and uh, you know, and, and it is a nice opportunity to sort of look at you know something like tennis, which I've never really had a whole lot of experience with, um, or you know, or swimming or something like that, and, and it, it it gives you. I guess an opportunity to just sort of branch out and and, and really think about how to do justice to this you know, to this sport, do justice to this idea without, um, you know, without really knowing a lot going in. I realize that's not really answering your question, but, um, but it is kind of, it is kind of nice to just have that opportunity um, to, you know, look at something that I've never really looked at before. I'm so familiar with the big three that, uh, or the big four that I don't always go to the other ones. So it's nice to have a chance to kind of look at that. Um, I feel like I'm definitely not a huge sports fan. Um, because I feel like pro wrestling can honestly be considered not a sport in some ways. It's definitely, they need to be good at doing things <laughs> with their bodies. Um, but I, I feel like since it's, um, it's, since it's fake, it's kind of like an outlier. I say that also, it's not, I know it's not, they're doing real flips, I know that. That's not what I mean when I say <laughs> it's, it's fake. It's athletic. I would yes, say it's athletic. athletic. Yes, athletic. that's the word I'm looking for. If it's for. not, yeah. Yes, so they definitely have to be athletic and do incredible feats of athleticism. Um, but, like, I was watching the Open this week, which was great. I watched the Olympics, but I'm definitely... I feel like wrestling is the thing that I tell people I make wrestling art and they're like, what? Because they don't <laughs> expect it from me at all. It's not like, I know a lot of wrestling fans like MMA and things like that. Not my thing. I want my fake fights and my pretty boys and girls <laughs> fighting. <laughs> uh, my husband has over the last decade kind of made me a convert into uh, American football. Um, but I will say my investment in that is butts. <laughs> so I would make a comment maybe about that um, or maybe a bio comic about Jason Kelsey. Look him up. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Thank you. thank you all so much. And thank you everyone for coming.